dreams come true. There is no limit to what we can do. Turning no's to yes, leaving doubt behind, releasing the stress. We were born to shine. Welcome to season three of Shade Champagne Show. Where we dream, where we live the impossible, grind hard radio. Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Tune in. 323-693-3043 Join me with my cast Veronica Esquivel Winters Christina Renee Aya Kunle Falama Rick and Melissa Wood Michelle Morgan And Ebony and Erica From Tulala One on YouTube We have celebrity guests Music Entertainment Spirituality Sports Fitness Health Wellness Beauty Hot topics Education Entrepreneurship and more. Yeah. Season three mm-hmm. of the Shade Champagne Show. Grind Hard Radio. Good evening, everyone. That was Family Force 5 with Show Love. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 38 of the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Every episode is available on iTunes. Search the Sade Champagne Show and you can download them for free. Also, my Sade Champagne YouTube channel is another place where you can listen to the show afterwards. Thanks to everyone for tuning in all around the globe. All the episodes of my show are available at blogtalkradio.com slash grindhard underscore radio. I've also posted the direct link to this episode on my Twitter and Facebook pages, so you can tune in at any time. Thank you to Travis Miller for creating and producing my show's theme song, and to Scott Swish for mixing it. Thanks to Kata Mafiaso for helping me to create my new radio drop. If this is your first time listening, I'm a professional musical artist, performer, inspirational speaker, and entrepreneur. I have created, directed, and executive produced almost 300 charitable and inspirational events, including my popular power of a dream tour. I love mentoring, coaching, authentically being myself, and using my platform to encourage, empower, and bring out the gold in others. Tonight's celebrity guest is award-winning singer, songwriter, musician, recording artist, and actor, my dear friend, Dalton Sear, who has fans in 192 countries around the world, an active social media following, and over 2 million views on YouTube. In early 2016, he released the first single from his upcoming third album and re-recorded and released The Way It Should Be, which is featured in the official music video for the feature film Time Toys, which just came out last month. As an actor, he can be seen in Pretty Little Liars, and he starred as Judd in Amazon Studios' music-driven sitcom A History of Radness. He was nominated for two awards at the 37th Annual Young Artist Awards, winning for Outstanding Young ensemble and a web or VOD series. He has toured all over the U.S. performing for crowds of more than 50,000 people. Castmates Michelle Morgan brought a new Mind Right Game Tight segment. Ebony and Erica brought a new Harry Situation segment. And Aya Kunle Falama brought a new Sharing Your Story segment. I'm so thankful to have just finished some amazing workshops with Friday Night Live, the Ventura County chapter, and I finished some amazing workshops at middle schools for middle school and high school students on bullying prevention and also building self-esteem. And I have some more upcoming speaking engagements and performances. As you know, graduations are about to be coming up, so I'll be doing a lot of keynote speaking for graduations, and I'm super excited about that and thankful. Me and my artists are always booking new shows and performances. We love traveling, and if you're looking to bring me, Power of a Dream Tour, or any of our award-winning critically acclaimed artists, mentors, or speakers to your city or event, please email me at sadechampagnemusic at gmail.com. That's sadechampagnemusic at gmail.com for more details. Check out my Facebook page, Sade Champagne, to see my full schedule. Just look under events. 
Lastly, thank you to everyone who's been watching, sharing, and subscribing to all my new videos. I'm constantly writing new pieces, I'm creating new songs, and I'm going back into the recording studio this month with my music producers, The Quakes. To find out more about my musical journey and how you can be involved, check out GoFundMe.com slash Sade Champagne Music. That's GoFundMe.com slash Sade Champagne Music. As usual, I'm live tweeting and posting on Facebook all show long, and I want to know your thoughts. Tweet me at Sade Champagne, Facebook, Sade Champagne, Instagram me at I am Sade Champagne, hashtag Sade Champagne Show, or GHR to join in the conversation. Shout out to everybody who you tweet me every week, you Facebook me, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, email, <laughs> every single way. I am super thankful for your support, and you continue to amaze me. We have our celebrity guest on the line, but before we get into his interview, let's play Dawson Sears' brand new single, Fall Into Place, and then this award-winning and critically acclaimed musical artist, songwriter, actor, and performer will be joining us right after on the Sade Champagne Show. You're listening to the Sade Champagne Show on Grindheart Radio. Right now on the line, I have one of my dearest friends, award-winning singer, songwriter, musician, recording artist, and actor, Dalton Sear, who has fans in 192 countries around the world and an active social media following of over 2 million views on YouTube and thousands of fans on all his other social media. He wrote and recorded his first original song at age 10, debuted his first album at age 12, and released his second album, A New Day. He also released a Christmas single, Christmas Time With You, which charted number 56 across all radio stations in the U.S. for new Christmas songs. In early 2016, he released the first single from his upcoming third album and re-recorded and released The Way It Should Be, which is featured in the official music video for the new movie Time Toys, which just came out last month. He was selected to participate in the 2013 International Prodigy Workshop comprised of the top 20 songwriters and filmmakers aged 12 to 18 from around the globe. As an actor, he can be seen in Pretty Little Liars, and he has starred as Judd in Amazon Studios' music-driven sitcom, A History of Radness, written and executive produced by Hannah Montana's Andrew Green, and as Holden in the movie Time Toys, directed by Mark Rosman, who did A Cinderella Story, the Perfect Man, which is already out, so you guys should be checking that out on demand. Two of his original songs are also featured in Time Toys. He was also nominated for two awards at the 37th Annual Young Artist Awards, winning an Outstanding Young Ensemble and a Web or VOD series. He has toured all over the U.S. performing for crowds of more than 50,000 people, and he has so much energy and stamina, I've seen it. Like, he just does not get tired. <laughs> Dalton has artist <laughs> relationships with Taylor's Guitars, Fender Guitar, Ernie Ball, and Guitar Center. In 2015, he was inducted into Robert M. Knight's The Brotherhood of the Guitar. Dalton supports multiple charities and is a national ambassador of the Dream Factory, an organization that grants dreams to critically and chronically ill children. He's appeared multiple times on local TV talk shows, radio shows, and in numerous newspapers, magazines, and publications across the U.S. and internationally. His music can be found on MTV, Vivo, iTunes, Apple Music, Amazon, CD Baby, Google Play, Pandora, Spotify, and many others. Hey, Dalton. Hey, that was like the most thorough, best intro I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I had to share it because people, they don't understand. You don't brag, but I will brag on you. That's what friends are for. <laughs> well, thank <laughs> so, you. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. It's so fun to talk to you today. I want to welcome you back to the Shade Champagne Show on Grindheart Radio. We are on Season 3, and this is your third time here. We love having you on at least once per season. Thanks. It is so great to be here. And so let's talk about your brand new single, Fall Into Place, that we just played before your interview, which is part of your Breeze Music Film Trilogy. First, tell us about the single and how the Music Film Trilogy came about. Yeah, sure. So um, Fall Into Place is the first single um, in my Breeze Music Film Trilogy, which is a film that is told over the course of three songs and three music videos. So it is also the first single on my new album, also titled Breathe, um, that mm -hmm. came out like just now. So 
it's it's been very very exciting um with the whole breathe album as well as the breathe film um the breathe film has been a pretty crazy experience getting us together i um i started working on the concept for this film or for a trilogy in february of 2016 so it's been like mm-hmm. 13 14 months now since conception wow. that now it's now it's finally it's done and um, the first chapter of Breathe is out on YouTube. Uh, but it took, like I said, it, it took over a year to get everything set up for this film. So um, coming up with the concept, fleshing out the concept, getting it um, written in concrete terms, writing the songs for the film, because it's it's told through music. I had to um, write three songs that, told this story but also stood on their own um at the same time so that was a that was a really fun challenge actually (laughs) i really enjoyed Mm -hmm. that part um and then uh today actually this is this is super exciting i talked about how the first part of the film is out right now but today Mm -hmm. the second part of the film Mm -hmm. is going out it's live Mhm, mhm. That's right. That is exactly right. And we're actually going to be playing the brand new single for that film, Echo, in just a couple minutes live on the show. And I'm going to be posting the link for the new video as well. Sweet. Thank you. Oh my goodness. So, how do you think in your brilliant mind? Probably that's why it is for your brilliant creative mind to say, hmm. I'm 15 years old at the time. I know you're 16 now. I'm going to create yeah. a music film trilogy. I'm going to write the songs. I'm also going to write the trilogy, and I'm going to think about what I want the videos to be like. Like, how does that even come about in your mind? Well, one, thank you. You're, you're so nice to me. Um, one, I had recently did a music video um, in Florida. I had I had uh, shot a music video with a crew, a producer, Dwayne Sykes, who is fantastic, just an extraordinary man. And um, at the premiere of that music video, um, Dwayne announced that he would be, he would want to do another project with me. And it was right then that I wanted to come up with something immediately that was like, um, that was more. I'm always trying to see what I can do better, see what I can do do more so Mm -hmm. I thought about it and I was like hmm I did a music video this time how do I Mm -hmm. how do I up that and I was like let's do multiple music videos um with Mm -hmm. one story so I I believe I got in contact with Dwayne like the day after he announced that he would want to work with me again I hopped Mm -hmm. right on it I was like okay so how about doing a trilogy um and and he liked the idea. So it was then that um, I knew I wanted to do a trilogy, and then I had to come up with that concept. So I started working on that. Wow. And I know with your first video that came out, Fall Into Place, it already has over 25,000 views, and that's just on YouTube alone. That doesn't include all the rest of your social media. And then the Huffington Post wrote about the video trilogy as well, and we're going to talk about the partnership that you had with it. Your response has been so great from um, the world and fans and supporters about this. Yeah, it's been pretty incredible how um, how much of an impact the film has had on people and and how much people really liked it, you know. Um, I did a premiere uh, in Florida where I showed the entire mm-hmm. film to, to the mm-hmm. people, um, and the impact it had was was pretty crazy. People really enjoyed it. So the fact that um, Huffington Post wrote a review on the film was fantastic, and people are all hopping on board and they're really enjoying it. Um, it's been very gratifying to to see, you know, because when I made this this film, I was really trying to grasp and give insight to like a very certain. Um, mm-hmm. event on this pendulum of life, if if you think about it and see it that way. Um, mm-hmm. On this pendulum, there's there's events where there's like great happiness and it swings around. There's events of great sorrow and there's a million events in between. Um, and I was trying to capture a very certain event of sorrow, loss, recovery, um, and it's impacted people. Mm. 
Wow, that's so powerful. As you mentioned, you are actually releasing part two, Echo of the Breathe Music Film Trilogy today, May 3rd. It is going live all throughout social media throughout the world. And so tell us about this song, you know, Echo, and the video before we play the song right now. Sure. So um, <laughs> I'm actually I'm really happy that it's coming out today because a lot of people who watch the video have been, like, badgering me. They're like, what happens? What happens in the film? I, I got to know. Um, so Echo the song is – well, when you think about the title and and you listen to the lyrics when you hear the song, this is a song about being stuck place, you know? person has experienced loss, and it's like everywhere they go, everything that happens to them in life now reminds them of this loss, and they're just, they, they're they stuck. They can't move. Um, mm. So I tried to capture that, that emotion and that feeling in this song. Mm-hmm. And for the first one that I saw fall into place, it is tremendous. You know what I mean? Like not only obviously your voice and the music and the lyrics, but the video itself and how you're able to emote is incredible. You know, because just because you are a singer and a performer doesn't mean, you know, that someone can automatically act as well. You know, we've seen it before. <laughs> we've seen it on both yeah. sides when people think just because they're on one side of the art that they that it transcends to the other. You know, it doesn't always do that. You know, but you are able to bring out that emotion, I feel. And so I am going to post a link to the video from my social media to share it with my supporters around the world. But for the people listening in tonight, we have a real treat for you. We are about to play Dawson Sears' new single, Echo, from the Breathe Music Film Trilogy right now on the Sade Champagne Show. And so, Dawson, please introduce your new song. Sure. All right. Here we go. We're doing it. Check out. Echo. Welcome back to the Shadi Champagne Show on Grindheart Radio. I'm here with my dear friend, award-winning singer, songwriter, musician, recording artist, and actor, Dalton Sear. I love your new song, Echo, from the Brief Music Film Trilogy that was released today. And I'm going to need everyone to go out and watch the video and then go and share it and then go invite at least three of your friends to share it. His new CD, Breathe, which was also just released, I want to have you tell us about that and where people can be able to get it and what can they expect from this new CD. Sure. So, um, Breathe, I'm actually doing a very cool thing with this album right now. What you can do is um, I have an official Dalton Seer app on iTunes and Android Store. Wow. So what you can do, if if you want to grab the album, you can go download my app and then you can order my album through the app, um, which I think is really cool. People have been liking yeah. it. People have been liking the app. There's tons of like features and things on the app as well. Like you can get my entire second album for free if you download the app. Um, so there's a lot of cool things about that. But with Breathe thematically, I think um, I talked a little bit earlier about this this pendulum of life, um, mm-hmm. and I'm fitting more and more into that when I think about it. Uh, so with Breathe, this is me still creating these stories, capturing these events, but um, a, a bit older, you know. This this is how life works, I'm finding, is that you you roll through life, you gather experiences. The more here, the more time you spend in the world, the more experiences you gather, the more stories you can create and the more stories you can tell. Um, so with the album, that's, that's what you're going to be experiencing is these – um, stories capturing these specific moments. Mm. I think that's like a mic drop moment right there that you have your own app. I mean, come on. That is really incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm super excited about it. That's amazing. So you recently partnered with Teens Against Distracted Driving, whose mission is to bring your music your Breathe Music Film Trilogy to high schools and get them to watch the film and then sign pledge cards committing to put their phones away and not to text and drive. So how did this partnership come about and how important is this cause to you? For sure. So um, when I created Breathe, the, the film, I it was created and it was done and we we're showing it to people and we, we had the premiere and It was really then that I saw how much impact the film had on people. I I expected to have impact, Mm -hmm. um, but to this level, honestly, I I didn't. Um, 
But the fact that people were so impacted by it, they were so impacted by this, um, well, this story of distracted driving, you know, the, the, the distracted driving was the catalyst for the loss in this film. Mm-hmm. And the fact that that impacted people so much, um, I, I thought I gathered some uh, people together and some ideas together and, and just thought, okay, so how can I, how can I push this as, as an issue? The driving is a very important issue and it's very relevant. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. don't think it's talked about nearly as enough as it should be. Um, so I started reaching out to organizations um, about like organizations about distracted driving and teens against distracted driving was like, um, an amazing um, find. They were very supportive, mm-hmm. and obviously the film and this organization fits in very well. So yeah, we're working on bringing this to high schools, um, being able to show the film, talk about the film, um, and then have students sign pledge cards to basically say, "I'm pledging not to text and drive. I'm pledging to my phone while I'm driving. It can wait." I'm just getting from point A to point B and it's really not worth it to pick up my phone Um, because people don't really realize it. But when you're driving, if you pick up your phone and look at your phone, you normally look at your phone for around like four seconds ish. And if you're driving Mm -hmm. at like 55 miles per hour and you look at your phone for four seconds in that span of time, you're going to go about the length of an NFL football field or two basketball courts. That's, that's how much distance you're going. And there's so much that can go wrong, um, especially Mm -hmm. texting. Um, There is a study at the University of Utah that showed that when people talked on the phone and drove at the same time, their brain split um, attention between the two functions, which is bad enough. Mm -hmm. But when you text, um, the study showed that the brain shut off most of the functions and focused solely on texting. So Mm -hmm. that just there's so um much opportunity for things to go wrong nearly 330,000 injuries occur each year from accidents caused solely by texting and driving um but you don't see you don't see um like a giant uproar or like this massive amount of conversation about it um Mm -hmm. so the fact that i have this film this story of loss and the story of recovery um I, I think it could be used as um, a tool to bring awareness to this and and show sure. people the effect that it has. I have one of my good friends. He actually has it on his phone where when he's driving, it sends an automatic text to people and says, I'm driving right now. I'll text you when I get to my destination. <laughs> and I'm like, That's extremely that is, nice. Yes, I'm like, that is the way to do it. So his phone will automatically just send that. So instead of people expecting him to text back, which is crazy because it's like nowadays um, people act like with text, like if someone doesn't answer you right back right away, our friendship is over, our relationship is over. It's like, okay, you can wait. It's going to be okay. Yeah, you don't, <laughs> you don't care about me anymore because you didn't text me in 10 minutes. I'm like, I'm going to an audition. I'm going to be driving like two hours today. Come on. It's like, exactly. You're like, come on. We need to act like how it was before there were cell phones when you just had to wait until someone got home and they listened to their voice message and they got you back and they came, got back to you. <laughs> right, yeah. But it's just like, it's it's just, it can wait. Especially when yeah. I'm driving. I, I see so many people around me, like on the street, even on the highway. That freaks me out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, more than yeah. a little bit, seeing people look at their phones on the highway. Um, there's just it, people don't realize it or they think that, oh, I know texting and driving is bad, but it's not like anything's going to happen to me. I'll be fine. Um, mm-hmm. But that's just definitely not the case. Um, mm-hmm. Hold on. National Safety Council reports that cell phone use while driving leads to 1.6 million crashes each year. Mm-hmm. So the people mm-hmm. who think that, oh, I'll just look at my phone for a couple of seconds, nothing can happen to me, I'll be fine. Next thing yeah. you know, they're like halfway over the median and they had this big crash. So yeah. if, if people can spread things like this, um, hopefully that'll get the message into people's heads that, yeah, it can wait. It's just a text. 
if your girlfriend's asking you like how your day was, you can text them back when you're done driving. It's not a word you're dying <laughs> exactly. for. Exactly. I 100% agree. And the Huffington Post wrote about um, your Breed Music Film Trilogy as well, and so that was a great article. That was fantastic, yeah. Um, Huffington Post did a review of the entire trilogy, um, mm-hmm. which was very nice of them to do. I was really happy about that. So I'm having that being shared all over the place. I'm having people share it mm-hmm. on Twitter and Facebook and, and Instagram. Yes, definitely. Let's talk about your YouTube channel. You are very consistent, and it's been incredible to watch your fan base on there grow more and more to almost 12,000 subscribers and over 2 million views. And so what are you currently working on for your channel, and what can your new and long-time subscribers expect from it? Sure. So, um, well, obviously, the the first and foremost project is Breathe. So I, mm-hmm. like we talked about earlier, um, part two of Breathe, is released today, so it's live now on YouTube, wow. so you can check that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then part three will be release, released at a later date, and then the entire film will be released at a later date. And um, mm-hmm. besides that, like you were talking about consistency, I, I work very hard to be a consistent contributor on YouTube, so I put videos mm-hmm. up every single Wednesday. Um, I do covers, I also do original songs, um, and I've been putting up videos every week for I think over eight months now or something it's wow. <laughs> it's been pretty crazy how long I've been doing it but I've found that it's it's a lot of fun for me it's it's a nice little challenge I pick a song every week or and I I make it really really good and I film it and ship it out and, and people enjoy that Mm-hmm. definitely you can tell because even like your Prince cover got I know that was over 50,000 views if not I'm sure more than that by now that was the last time I checked months ago and yeah so I, like, I think it's at like 62 63 see that's what I mean it's like and people are really appreciating it and so I think that's another place where people can get all the Dolphin Sierra they can besides your amazing app and your website as well and so what shows and events do you have coming up next so uh, one event, sort of event thing <laughs> that's really cool actually right now is um, I just got word that iTunes is doing a um, is doing a kids sale promotion right now. So my movie Time Toys we talked about very briefly earlier, um, mm-hmm. which came out that, last so month. Go ahead. It's yeah. Oh, okay, cool. It's um, it's included in the sale promotion. So um, until May 9th, mm-hmm. you guys can go onto YouTube and you can grab the movie for 9.99. Uh, on the sale. So that's something I'm super excited about, and I got word of that very recently. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And so what was that film about, and how did you enjoy that project? I saw some pictures and um, some different behind-the-scenes things when you were at the red carpet um, for a premiere for it. So tell us about that film and what it was like doing that. Sure. So um, Time Toys is a story about kids finding toys from the future and using them to help save the world from the bad guys. It's, it's, it really brings back feelings to, you know, those like, I wouldn't say old school, but like those nice feel good kid movies, those good family movies (laughs) that we don't Mm -hmm. see too much of these days. Um, It's, it's a movie like that. And it felt so nice to be a part of making something that was just, it was wholesome, it was a good story, and I really enjoyed being a part of it. Um, So we filmed uh, a while ago, and it was, honestly, it was was a really great experience filming because um, most of the cast were kids. Uh, They were all people Mm -hmm. around my age, and everybody Mm -hmm. was just very fun to work with. It was a great time on set. There was no, like problems or anything it was just a good time and everybody was working to like the best of their ability um so that was great the premiere was fantastic as well i mean the movie only came out last month um Mm -hmm. so this was this was fairly recent but Mm -hmm. people really enjoy the movie right now people are really liking it so that makes me all warm and fuzzy inside (laughs) This is so funny. And so where do you most want to travel? Okay. 
Um, hmm, that's that's a really good question. I like to travel, so it's kind of a hard one. Um, I'm gonna narrow it down a bit. You mean travel just to travel, just to be there, or travel to like perform, or what? Either or. You can answer it as both, like where you want to just to be and where you like to perform. Um, well, I'd really like to go to Ireland. I think Ireland would be awesome if I could just go and mm-hmm. stay for a week or three. Um, <laughs> and I would like to do, I'd like to do a European tour. I I think I will. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I feel like that would be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And what is one major dream you have for yourself this year? It can be personal or professional. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with professional. Um, I, I know I just released an album like less than two weeks ago now, but I am working really hard and I would really like to release another album by the end of the year. Wow. A whole brand new nether. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know how I do. I try to get it out there. (laughs) <laughs> I know how you do. You are definitely um, – well, I think that's one of the cool things. Well, there's tons of cool things about you, but one of the cool things is that you are very much into positivity and encouragement and into affirmations and speaking things into existence. But you also bring the muscle with it, you know what I mean? And so you actually yeah. work to do it. You actually believe it and bring it about. So I honestly don't see that as being an impossibility for you. I would say, well, you do work really hard, so you're one of the crazy bunch like I am, so <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> possible that it's going to happen, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing, to hearing and hearing it and seeing what you're going to come out with the rest of this year. Well, thank you very much. And how do you stay in such great shape? Because I'm telling you guys, like, Dalton, he never gets tired. He can perform, like, <laughs> freaking two hours, and he's just, like, still full of energy. His voice is still strong. His movements, everything, he just is always in great shape. And so how do you stay in great well, shape? Well, thank you. Um, I, well, I will say that when I first started, when I did, like, my first tour, um, I would do conditioning, and I would rehearse for hours every day forever i just rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed until like until i could run around and play guitar and sing and do all these things for hours and be all right um i think that one thing that helps um with pretty much every aspect of your life is keeping yourself in shape um healthy body healthy mind that whole thing so like in Mm -hmm. In the past three weeks, I've been going to the gym at least five days a week, every week. Um, Mm -hmm. And doing that helps you stay on top of your your body. It helps, obviously, like I said, helps your mind as well. So it helps you stay on top of every aspect of your life. Um, So I'm I'm finding that doing the gigs, doing the rehearsals, um, and doing the exercises, you know, doing exercises for your body, exercises for your voice, obviously. Um, you all mm-hmm. uh, just keeps that engine running so you can go up on stage and continue to make that happen as opposed to, like, not practicing or not working out or doing anything for, like, a week or a week and a half or two mm-hmm. weeks. You you try to go up mm-hmm. on stage, it's, it's, it's not going to work. No, I could talk to you forever because we always have so much fun together. And um, and he yeah. always has me cracking up with his sarcasm and <laughs> his silliness. And so what um, are some words of encouragement and wisdom that you would give to up-and-coming artists, especially, I would say, teens around your age and younger? Because I'm sure you see with the rise of social media, you know, people, a lot of people, they want to either just be a reality TV or social media star, and they think things are going to happen overnight. But they don't realize, yes, you may be only 16, but you've been working hard at your dreams for over half of your life now, you know what I mean? So it's like you're going to be hitting up on 10 years, you know, um, any, any <laughs> day now that you've been pursuing your dreams. So it's not like these things have happened for you overnight and you've been consistent and persistent. So what are some words of wisdom and encouragement you would give to these up-and-coming artists and performers who think that they're just going to be able to skate their way through it and they feel entitled? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that there's a lot of opportunity out there right now. And I mean, not only in music and in art, but in every field, there's there's just so mm-hmm. much opportunity out there, especially with things like the internet. 
Um, and the fact that we can communicate so clearly with so many people. Um, my thing, I believe I've said this, um, I think in the first season when I came on, is that it sounds it sounds tough, but if you can get this mentality, it'll help you out so much. If you want it, you're going to make it happen. Is that if you mm. if you wake up every day and you just like you can't go five seconds without singing part of a song or you can't go five seconds without like air guitaring something, then, hey, you want it. And if you want it that mm. bad, then nothing's going to stop you from getting what you want because that's that's how the world works. If you want it that badly, the world sees that. The world sees that you're going to want to work and you're going to want to make it happen. And the world's going to mm-hmm. actually kind of try to help you on the way. Um, mm-hmm. And people, people love to see that. People love to mm-hmm. see other people who are passionate about things. It, it's like It's like watching somebody like – put so much care and so much effort into something that they do, it's interesting and it makes you want to support them. It's like, wow, that's really cool. So if you're mm-hmm. showing that to people and, and maybe take some time, because I know everybody uses their social media, take some time and next time you go to post a picture of your like Starbucks drink or your like plate of food, <laughs> just think about what what do I want what do I really want and how Mm. can I share that feeling with my people? People love Mm. to see that. And it's so much more meaningful than your like burger or whatever. I mean, that's all fun and cool too, but um, Mm -hmm. people like to to see that and people like to support other people. Mm -hmm. That's really good. I definitely agree with that. And, um, and you're so right, you know, because I feel like that's one of the reasons that we became great friends is because when I first met you, when you were a judge for one of my singing competitions and one of the charity events that I had done, I saw your passion and how excited you were and how much you supported other people and how passionate you were about what you do. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I want this person to be my friend. And I want us to get to know each other better and get to know his family. And through that, we've been supporting each other now for over the past almost three years, I think. And so um, I think you're yeah. exactly right about that, um, you know, and, and people will be drawn to that. Yeah, I, I can't believe it's been like three years now. That's crazy. I know. I remember, I remember like everything like it was yesterday. I have a, a little bit of a photographic memory. So I always carry that awesomeness in my heart. <laughs> Aw. So as we are wrapping up our time together, I want to remind everyone you got lots of yummy, awesome stuff from Dalton that is out right now. So you can just be encouraged by it, challenged by it, inspired by it. Your creativity can accelerate through this. His Breathe Music Film Trilogy is out right now. And part two just went live today. So you can go into social media to be able to check that out. And then also, his, which we're going to actually introduce this song as we're finishing up, his new movie, Time Toys, which just came out last month, it is included in the sales, the kids' sales promotion on iTunes from May 2nd to May 9th. And so you guys will be able to get that only nine ninety nine, and also have his songs on there, which you're not alone in the way it should be. And so, Dalton, I want to have you introduce, you know this is my song. I even awarded you at my second annual Dare to Dream Music Festival for um, a Songs of Hope recipient because I love this song so much in the message. And so I want to have you share a little bit about You Are Not Alone and then introduce it as we finish up our time together on the Shade Champagne Show. Thank you. For sure. So You're Not Alone is a song from my first album that I primarily wrote to inspire hope in people. Um, I was contacted by somebody who was who had completely, they were just totally out of hope. And that that happens to people, you know? Not everything is always the best all the time. Mm-hmm. And when you're when you're down on your luck and you're not feeling it, it helps to know that you're not alone. This song, um, I've gotten a lot of feedback on it and I've heard that it's had a lot of impact on people with um giving them hope and, and giving them that strength to, to move forward and to push and through whatever is blocking them or whatever's in their way. So uh, those of you listening, I hope that if you are feeling down or you are in that space, I hope this can help you out too. This is You're Not Alone.
And thank you so much to Dalton Sear. This is the Sade Champagne Show. Keep listening on Grind Hard Radio. Are you looking for a dynamic musical artist, performer, host, or inspirational speaker for your next event? What about a mentor, vocal instructor, or workshop leader for your school, company, or seminar? Contact Sade Champagne for countless professional services that are sure to fit your particular need. She is an in-demand, award-winning, and critically acclaimed musical artist, performer, inspirational speaker, and entrepreneur who is invited all around the world. She is known for having a powerful voice, turning ideas into action, creating, directing, and executive producing popular charitable and inspirational events, and bringing out the gold in others. Her services are for all ages, backgrounds, and environments. Contact Sade Champagne at Sade Champagne Music at gmail.com. That's Sade Champagne Music at gmail.com to book her for your next event or project. Hi, you're tuned in to Grind Hard Radio. This is Ayokunle Falomo from the Sharing Your Story segment on the Sade Champagne Show. Keep listening. Welcome back to the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Our next segment of the night is a brand new one from one of our brand new castmates for season three. Mind Right, Game Tight with Michelle Morgan. Join published author, speaker, and transformational sports coach Michelle Morgan as she shares inspirational stories of athletes who use the power of their mind to take their game to the next level in sports and in life. Hashtag Mind Right Game Tight to ask her your questions and join in the conversation. Hi, this is Michelle Morgan with the Mind Right Game Tight segment on the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Today's guest is Margot Bangs. She's a great friend of mine. We played basketball together and against each other as well. <laughs> um, but she also earned a college basketball scholarship, and through her journey of life, she has now opened a yoga studio. Um, out here in Santa Paula, California. So welcome to the show, Marco. Thank you. Happy to be here. Awesome. So why did you start or why did you open a yoga studio? Um, well, I found yoga several years ago and it was really good for me as far as stress relief and calming down and sort of just feeling good in my body after years and years of weightlifting and training for sports and things like that, I felt like I was really tight. So I really felt the difference and it had a huge impact on me. So I knew that as soon as really one of the first classes I took, I knew that I was going to want to teach eventually. Um, And then I started teaching and just sort of really looking for a way uh, to make a living doing it uh, was one thing. And then also just the community that my studio is in really didn't have any access to yoga. And I want yoga to be accessible to as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And so that's what sort of drove me to open the studio that I did. So going back to like the sports part of things and because it's the mind right game type segment. So how do you feel that as an athlete, like and doing yoga, what are the benefits of the mental training that goes on with doing yoga? Um, Not just, you know, people thinking like, Oh, it's all about stretching and being flexible. What's the mental benefits that you can get, you know, while you're, you know, playing sports or just any area of your life as well? Well, I I think I always like to say this too on the physical benefits is that it is flexibility. It's also a lot of strength and stability in your joints. So like it's not going to see how far we can stretch because we don't, there's certain parts of our body that we don't want to, we don't want our knees to be like moving around all over the place. So it's like also about creating stability there. And then mentally, there's so much. Um, It makes you a calmer person. I think it's made me a better sportsman. Um, You know, still playing basketball today, even though it's maybe not as serious, it's not as competitive, right? Your mind gets heated up, you get fired up in the midst of competition. And I think that I'm able to kind of slow my reactions down a little bit to where I'm not going to like cuss out a ref or something like that because I can kind of take that moment and, you know, literally like breathe for a second. And um, that I think is a huge part of it is like becoming a better sportsman in that way that you can sort of recognize the surroundings, recognize what's happening and let everything slow down a little bit so that your emotions don't get carried away from you. And then I also think just that that idea of slowing down is the best way that I can, because even in pressure situations in sports, I think if you can slow it down, mm-hmm. right, like then you can react 
in the way that you need much better. So if you need to get a last minute shot off or something like that, if you have the ability to stay calm in those situations, those are the people who we see become really elite athletes. You know, I look at like Steph Curry, who's, you know, blown up over the last few years, and he's one of those people who's like, man, how do you hit that shot at the last second in the biggest game in the world on the biggest stage? And there's like some sense of having focus to that. And so with yoga and meditation, it really is about focus. That's the biggest kind of idea. One, you get to know your body, but through that, you're slowing your breath down and you're observing things. So you're observing the way that your body reacts to things and you're observing how your breath is affected by certain things. And so if you go just to strictly like body level, when we get stressed out, our breath changes, we breathe, start to breathe fast and shallow and through our mouth. But if we can train ourselves to breathe through our nose and to breathe slowly and, and to use our diaphragm, that actually literally sends messages to our nervous system that we're okay and that we can be calm. And so if you can train yourself to do that in situations that do become stressful, then you can remain calm and thoughtful. And so like I used to teach with some martial artists or some jujitsu guys. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, so imagine if somebody's on top of you, like choking you out, right? (laughs) Imagine if you can take a moment and like, calm yourself down and then you can actually think about the skills that you know you have in your brain the skills to like get out of a certain hold or something like that but if you're flustered and Mm -hmm. you're overly emotional or whatever it is you're not going to be able to utilize that part of your brain because you're just in this sort of flight or fight mode of like I got to get out of here yeah it's like you need to be able to slow down the processes and so I think that for athletes that's like one of the biggest things is just being able to focus having a clear mind, and being able to stay calm in, in places that um, are high. I mean, athletes and um, competition is a high emotional place. Like, mm. we all kind of get up to the you know height of our emotional state, oh, yeah. whether it's excitement or anger or frustration. So I think being able to slow that down and kind of stay focused is one of the biggest benefits. That sounds awesome. I, I think about it just listening to you talk, and it's like, wow, I wish I had – access or the education about yoga because of the way you know every player is different every person is different on how they handle situations but even as an athlete like for me I was so intense so like you know like you were (laughs) (laughs) and it's like okay like this is a this is an important moment right here and if it's you know just imagine especially not in just like a single um, person sport or even just in a team sport if everybody on that same team had that same awareness as to what was going on, and let's all take a breath. And it's like, not just I'm the only one who knows about, you know, having a a peaceful or restful state of Mm -hmm. mind, but everybody at that one time knowing it so that we can eventually see a different result. So I find that, you know, very beneficial and, you know, not just including it by yourself, but also like involving your team and even like your your friends, whoever it may be, so you can create that, that community of just rest and mm-hmm. calmness on how to uh, approach a situation in the best way that you know you can. And I know in sports, sometimes we think that we think things happen so quick that it's re- it's like really there's a lot of time. So yeah. even if there's 10 seconds left on the clock, you know, you hear people say like, oh, that's a lot of time, even though they're down yeah. by five. Yeah. You know, and it's like we don't think that. Sometimes we think, oh, we got to hurry up and get this shot off. And it's like if we just all understood like where we are, understand everything that we practice and just bring that into it. So... I love that. Yeah. So I, I, I feel like, you know, even, you know, now and prior and, you know, if you're listening to this, like understanding, you know, see if there's any yoga studios in your area to add a new skill set to your game because it's not just about working on your skills. There's also that mindful part that really takes your game to the next level. And we always want to make sure that we have people like in those moments who can, um, rise to that occasion and be present in that moment so how often does someone need to practice yoga um to kind of feel the full benefits of Mm. of doing it um there's a great saying uh in the yoga world i guess um that if you do once if you do yoga once or twice a week you'll see your body change if you do yoga three or four times a week you'll see your mind change if you do yoga five or six times a week, you'll see your life change. Wow. 
<laughs> so it depends on what you're looking for out of your yoga practice, really. You know? uh, and it's and I can tell you that it's very true. Um, it's like I, you know, I opened the studio, and for two months before I actually opened the doors, we were doing construction. And when I say we, I literally mean me most days by myself. I had my husband on the weekends, but like doing stuff that I've never done before, laying floors and like drywalling and things that like were way over my head. That was probably the most stressful time of my life. But during that time, I was practice doing a full yoga practice every single day, as well as meditating. And I credit that with getting me through that time. If I had not been doing that, I would have probably lost my mind, honestly, because it was so stressful. But I had some sense of like calm and connectedness and just feeling kind of grounded to like what's going on, thanks to like getting up and doing that every day before I went out and approached these really daunting tasks. Mm, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> um, so then, like, what would you say, like, if you had 30 seconds to tell somebody who's like, you know, they're hearing about it and they're like, ah, oh, that's not for me, yeah. because I can be honest, like, prior to really learning and meeting people who do yoga, I'm like, uh, nah, I, I'm just good with the weights and, you know, doing my normal routine. You know, what would you say to somebody who's kind of like, no, that's not for me? Yeah. I would say that I felt the exact same way. I literally had my best friend tell me that I should try yoga and my response was, that's not the kind of workout that I like. Um, and then I went to a yoga class and um, I gave it a try and I loved it I just felt so relaxed afterwards and I hadn't felt that in a long time and I think for most people they don't get to feel that we don't really live in a time where people rest and relax much so mm -hmm. um, I think that give it a few tries because sometimes it takes a teacher that you connect with or a certain style of yoga you know go out there and try it um, and just know that you deserve to have that time for yourself I think that's one of the biggest things it's like if for anything just give yourself that quiet hour or half hour, or however long the class is, to just have that time to sort of separate from everything. Because we really do have kind of an over, our senses are overstimulated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. we just need to disconnect. So that would be, you know, the way that I would try to sell it. I would say that, you know, I'm willing to bet your body will feel better and that you'll feel calmer and more rested after one yoga class. But you give it, um, if you give it a little bit of a dedication to just kind of give it a try, I think you'll see. A real big difference in the way that you feel physically and but more importantly and I think more drastically mentally awesome so what one piece of advice would you give to somebody because this is the mind right mm -hmm. to get your game tight yeah. segment so what pe one piece of mental advice would you give somebody in order to you know see themselves you know reach a, another level or a new yeah. height in whatever it is they're doing it doesn't have to be sport it could be in their career it can be in your relationships because your mind is always involved in everything that you do? Oh, man, that's a big question. <laughs> um, forgive yourself. That would be my biggest piece of advice because I think that it's just always my experience when I talk to other people about me. I'm really hard on myself. And the more that I talk to other people, the more I realize, like, none of us have it figured out. We're all trying. We're all trying to do our best. And so if we can just cut ourselves a little slack and know that um, you know if you're doing your, you know if you're giving your all or you know if you're slacking off. We've all been there, especially mm -hmm. if you're an athlete. You know there's times when you slacked <laughs> off. You know there's times when you haven't practiced super hard and there's times when you've been really like driven and, and given it your all. So you could recognize that, that to yourself. But um, one of the things that one of my teachers used to say is that when you do something like that, when you make a mistake or if, you know, if it's on the court or it's in life or in a relationship um, or missing your yoga practice, right? Mm -hmm. Like missing your workout, whatever it is like, okay, you do that. Don't compound it by beating yourself up about it because now you're just like a double negative. Like you had one bad thing. Now you got two bad things. So yeah. I just think that the more that we can be kind of gentle on ourselves and forgive ourselves and just see our own humanity. We're not flawless. We're all trying the more that we then see that in each other. And so it makes us a better partner, makes us able to look at our partner and forgive them when they do something that annoys us or that is imperfect. It lets us forgive our teammate when they miss a shot or when they uh, don't be in the right place at the right time. <laughs> just kidding. Um, you know what I mean? Or our coworker or whatever it is, our friendships, you know, just the more that we can kind of see um, – our own humanity and just like, you know, we're flawed beings. It was, it's what makes us human and it's what makes us really special. 
And if we can embrace that, then we can embrace it other places. And I think it improves every aspect of our life. Awesome. I love that because I believe that forgiveness is so important. And yeah. I think we tend to forget that as well. And most importantly, it's like we're we're taught almost to forgive others. And it's oh, like, yeah. what about ourselves? Absolutely. So I love that you came up with that. And I knew you would have some words <laughs> of wisdom when being asked that question. So thank you so much, Margo, for thank being you. on the Mind Right Game Tight segment. And then if anybody wants to get more information about you and what you do, like what are the ways that they can they yeah. can reach you? Um, they can find the studio on Facebook and Instagram. It's Yoga Casita is the name of it. So it's Facebook slash Yoga Casita or in, at in, uh, Yoga Casita on Instagram. The website is also www.yogacasita.com. Um, my name's Margo Bangs. Same thing on social media. So if you want to find me on there, I have a really boring Instagram <laughs> <laughs> But if you go to yogacasita.com, you can learn a lot about, you know, the classes that she's offering and just, you know, a great way to learn different things because I know at your studio you also offer, like, meditation yeah. classes and things like that, which is very important in taking wherever, whatever area it is you're trying to go to the next level. So, once again, thank you, Margot. Thank, thank you for being on. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Mind Right Game Tight segment on the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. You're listening to episode 38 of the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Our next segment of the night is a brand new one from our other two brand new castmates for season three, Harry Situations with Ebony and Erica from Two La La One on YouTube. Join models, actresses, and content creators Ebony and Erica from Two La La One on YouTube as they cover tips, advice, and much-needed conversation for all your hair needs. Hashtag Harry Situations to ask them your questions and join in the conversation. Hey guys, welcome to our very first episode of Harry Situations. I'm Ebony and I'm Erica, and we're video creators. and You can find us on YouTube under the name Two La La One. That's T W O L A L A with the number one at the end. Yeah, for more from us. All right, so let's get into this. So, what's the Harry situation for today? Well, this past week, Shea Moisture, one of our favorite hair brands, got caught up in a bit of a hairy situation. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Do you think, like, the smoke cleared on that? Yeah, I think so. Um, there was a lot of cleaning up that he had to do, and probably still are, but it brings about much-needed discussion about texture, inclusion, and representation when it comes to um, mainstream marketing for hair products that are, you know, for black hair. Right. So, I didn't see the ad. Did you see it? Yeah, I did. Um, not when it initially aired, but later on I saw someone had posted it somewhere on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I guess I haven't seen it, but was it as bad as people said it was? Or Well, here's the thing. I saw it after reading you know, all the backlash and comments all over social media. Right. So I was already expecting the absolute worst. So when I did see it, I was like, okay, this ad is off. It threw me off, not going to lie. And then I was just like, okay, yeah, I see why people mm -hmm. are upset. Okay, yeah, so I I pieced together the gist of, you know, what it was about through the comments. You know, mm -hmm. I've been seeing, like, different articles discussing it. Well, yeah, see, here's where you can where you can sort of see the silver lining in it. It's the discussion that's taking place. Right. One thing about the outcome of these ads, whether they are good or bad, comes the conversation, and not just angry conversation, which is understandable and expected, especially if the ad comes out, you know, bad, but conversation intended to educate, um... The point of the ad or the commercial was to end hair hate among all hair types, which is good in and of itself, but a lot of people were upset because of the white women and the hair texture that was put on display in the commercial and the significant air time that they got, and, you know, the occasional glimpse of the black woman and then, like, maybe 0.3 seconds of a few black women at the end. And the issue to me, and this is my opinion, but I think the issue wasn't really who was included in the ad, but who was excluded. You know, the backbone of the brand, you know, black women with different hair textures. Shea Moisture looked out for us as black women, especially women with their natural curly textures, you know, to keep our hair right and tight in the beauty industry where black hair care is not at eye level just yet. And in turn, we look out for them with our dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. So I see it. So Shea Moisture, their intention was inclusion, but while they were doing that, they, they were actually excluding yeah. people. Okay. Yeah, because remember last year, their Break the Walls campaign? Yeah, that, like, was, that was pretty epic. epic. Yeah. yeah. Really and good. I just kind of like lost on why they would stray away from yeah. that. But what I'm getting at is this. I, I would have loved to see 
black women and girls on these hair commercials when I was growing up. You know, right. back in the 90s, mm-hmm. these big hair brands used a lot of white women mm-hmm. in their commercials, uh-huh. and um, they didn't, they didn't have, have the same, same hair texture, texture as us. Yeah. So um, I'm not slamming or shaming them, but I'm just saying that now it's, you know, refreshing to see a hair brand that's been gaining traction, you know, you know looking out for us women with black texture and keeping us in mind with their marketing efforts. You know, we are a minority group, obviously, and we share in each other's success. Right. And we support each other. So the ad was kind of like a, you know, He's like, he's the way you're explaining it was kind of like a slap in the face. Yeah, and scratch my back, I'll scratch, scratch you. Right, I can see why people were upset. Well, yeah, because, you know, hair hate is a real thing. Um, and we aren't downplaying hair hate among other ethnic groups, right. you know. But um, I guess for black women who have a variety of textures, it's extremely common. Hair hate is extremely common. And in some environments or countries, it's looked down upon, you know, but... I mean, yeah, there's hair hate among all women for a variety of reasons, but I think Shea Moisture, you know, they were right with that, but they were focused on the wrong reasons and Mm -hmm. textures, you know, in that commercial. They focused on textures and reasons other than what represented the core of their brand, what built them. So, yeah, they were on the right track, but it's the wrong train. (laughs) (laughs) So since you saw the ad, how would you change it up? Like, what would you do differently? Um... They had the right structure with the ad, but um, I definitely would have had black women on the display more. Like, I would have di- black women with different hair types on display more. And then maybe at the end, where, you know, they had that little Brady Bunch square. You, you didn't see us, you know what I'm talking about. But the little at the end of the commercial, there's like little Brady Bunch squares and stuff where everybody appears. I think that's when they could have included, you know, um, white women in that and stuff like that. But I think the main part of the commercial should have been. Uh, different black women with different hair textures talking about how, you know, their hair hate and stuff and everything. So um, that's how I would have thought about it. Like, they had the structure right, but it just, you know, delivery was off. Delivery was off, yeah. <clears throat> so I guess the question is, are we boycotting Shea Moisture? I don't know. I don't know. They made a mistake. No, I wouldn't boycott them. They made a mistake. I like their products and stuff. I'll definitely wait to see what their next their next move is going to be. Uh, they know what they have to do, and I'm sure, or I hope, they make some adjustments internally as well. Um, and by the way, no shade to the people who are boycotting. Uh, we get you. It affects people in different ways. Some people identify with the brand in a more personal, intimate way. So, of course, we understand the outrage and betray- betrayal they would feel. Um, so I guess they'll be finding other brands to support. Yeah. Um, which... I think is another silver lining too. Maybe not for Shea Moisture, but um, I noticed in the comments that because of this, people were listing black-owned hair brands that they were moving on to. So it kind of puts those brands on the map that maybe some people didn't know about. So that's like another glass half full yeah. way to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's our take on it, and that's all for this episode of Harry Situation. Don't forget to go watch us on YouTube at www.youtube.com slash 2 one and we'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye! Our final segment of the night is Sharing Your Story. Join published author, speaker, and poet Ayakunle Falama as he inspires you and shares tips on how to tell your own stories. Hashtag Sharing Your Story to ask him your questions and join in the conversation. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to a new season of the Shade Champagne Show. And also welcome to a new episode, the first ep- episode in this season of uh, the Sharing Your Story segment. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about inspiration, uh, what inspires you know, my writing and in hopes that it would inspire you to find new ways to think about how to share your story. Uh, Like I have always said, when I think of uh, poetry, I I think of it as just another another way of telling stories. And I know for some of you listening, uh, you might not necessarily be writing poetry. Uh, You might be into songwriting. You might be uh, into short story writing. You might be into writing plays or writing screen uh, plays uh, or writing um, or drawing or painting um, or sculpting 
whatever the case might be, I think with all the things that we are doing uh, with art, we all are just trying to tell stories, right? Uh, stories about the human condition, stories about us, stories about where we come from, stories about our frustrations uh, with where we are as a people, as individuals, uh, stories about where we're going. And all that is very much uh, important. And uh, so, how how do we get inspiration, right, to, to write stories? Um, of course, there are different ways where we can get inspiration. Um, the biggest portion of it for most people is is personal, you know, personal experience. A lot of people get inspiration uh, based on things that they have gone through. Uh, a lot of people get inspiration uh, from things that they are currently going through. Um, and they write stories about that to remind us, you know, about what it means to be to be human. That seems to be the, pro- like, for me, that seems to be the preoccupation with my work. I am very, very preoccupied with what does it, uh, with what it means to be human. And uh, my stories essentially reflect that. And that is, my poems essentially reflect, uh, you know, an attempt at, at answering that question. Uh, so for, like I said, one, for a lot of people, inspiration comes from personal experience. Um, also for a lot of people, uh, inspiration comes from music. And I'll talk about that uh, a little more. Uh, inspiration comes from listening to another person, you know, tell their story. Um, that that seems to be a significant part of of being inspired. You listen to a song and you want to go ahead and paint. You listen to a song, regardless of whether it has lyrics or not. Music just has the potential of actually inspiring. Um, which is which is great, which is fascinating. Um, that's number two. For other people, uh, they get inspired by nature, right? Taking a walk, uh, swimming, uh, whatever the case might be, uh, they get inspired by nature, uh, or being around nature, or being in nature. Uh, that produces some sense of inspiration. Uh, there are countless poems uh, that have been written uh, just about nature, right? There are countless songs that have been written about nature, about water, about the sea, about the ocean, about mountains, about hills, um, about forests, about trees. Uh, and they often are used as metaphors too, right? For uh, for understanding, you know, our condition as human beings. Um, nature is another way uh, to get inspiration. Uh, if you're feeling like you're blocked and you have what most people call writer's block, right? Um, taking a walk, right, around your neighborhood, or taking a trip away from the cities, you know, if you're living in a, in a city that doesn't really have access to to nature like that, uh, taking a walk or, or taking a, a three-day retreat or whatever, going to the woods to find a cabin there, whatever the case might be, or just literally taking a walk around your neighborhood, um, is another effective way of getting inspiration. Um, another way of getting inspiration is just observation. Uh, observing life as life happens. Uh, looking around you. Uh, getting inspiration from just pure observation. You are at the park. Uh, you are on the bus. Just looking at people and listening to you know people. Uh, you get to you get to have insight into okay again 
the human condition. And I say that because that's that's kind of what matters for me. Uh, you can you can change that for what your own mission might be for telling stories. Uh, but for me, it goes back to the human condition. And just from pure observation, uh, you can easily get inspiration. Uh, observing life as it happens uh, for other people. Because um, life is a huge, uh, huge source of inspiration. Life really is. Uh, it teaches you a lot. It gives you a lot. And it is up to you as a storyteller to decide what you want to make out of it, right? Uh, so I have shared some of the ways that you can get inspiration uh, to tell the stories that you do want to tell. Uh, I said I was going to go back to the music thing. Um, and I will end the segment with uh, a poem that I uh, that I wrote uh, that was inspired by the music of Chance the Rapper, who uh, I really, really like. Uh, I like listening to him a lot. Um, and I get, I get, in, well, I got inspired to write this poem, uh, listening while listening to his music, and also uh, observation as well. Uh, so there are two different sources of inspiration uh, for this poem. And it's called, uh, and recently was accepted for publication uh, with Squawk Back. So uh, that's exciting. The poem is called Because Sometimes the Voice of Chance the Rapper Becomes a Warm Blanket. Black boy walks the streets of the Big Easy. The air is cold and the voice of Chance the Rapper becomes a warm blanket around his ears. The bright red of the boy's headphones remind him of stained streets with open mouths, still thirsty for the blood of his brothers and sisters, and of course, the bullet remains a benevolent god, opens up their bodies until it floods red, and yet... The streets still have parched throats. But let us not make this about that because black boy walks the streets of a city that is not his, sees a white woman rake the sees a white woman rake the leaves in her yard. I mean, leaves now brown, full of no light, but still also beautiful. And metaphors do not have enough blankets to wrap this moment in. Our yard is a reminder of all, like life, and the black boy joy that warms his ears the things that matter. What I mean is this. What do you do when while walking? Chance the rapper playing as quietly as possible in your headphones. You see a white woman raking leaves in her yard, where by the wall is a sign that reads Black Lives Matter. The answer is, you pull your headphones like a black mother does her son in a little closer. Turn the music up a little. Drown in joy while dreaming of a yard where all the leaves that are falling, thanks to a bullet, can grow endless fields of daffodils and chamomile. Thank you. And uh, that would be uh, the segment for today. Um, Thank you for tuning uh for tuning in uh for listening and I hope to catch you all soon. All right, peace out. Our next song of the night is Kirk Franklin and Yolanda Adams with After While. Keep listening to the Shade Champagne show on Grindhard Radio. The Living with Fearless Joy segment on the Shade Champagne Radio show features Rick and Melissa Wood, who run a ministry called Fearless Joy Ministries. Rick and Melissa have a passion to see people free from religion, free from fear, and living lives full of freedom and full of joy. Melissa has authored a book titled Eliminating Fear, How Removing the Fear of God Leads to Removing Fear in Life. If you would like to book Rick and Melissa for any speaking engagements, conferences, 
or to talk about Eliminating Fear, you can reach them at the website eliminatingfear.com. Just make sure to go to the Contact Us page where you can get more information and you can communicate with them personally. You can find Melissa at Melissa Joy Wood at Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And you can find Rick at Rick C. Wood at Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And right here on Grind Hard Radio on the Sade Champagne Show. Thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight to Episode 38 of the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Thank you for downloading, subscribing, and sharing my radio show. Next week, our celebrity guests include actress, producer, model, and TV host, Emily McKendry, and published author, Speaker, producer, talk show host, and owner of LVG PR, Elvira Guzman. We also have new segments from my castmates, Wellness Made Simple with Veronica Esquivel Winters, Living with Fearless Joy with Rick and Melissa Wood, and Charity Spotlight segment featuring the Los Angeles Dream Center's Human Trafficking Shelter. Thanks to Grand Heart Radio for the opportunity to create my own radio shows. Thanks to Travis Miller for creating and producing my theme song and to Scott Swish for mixing the song. Thanks to Kata Mafioso for helping me to create our new radio drop. Thanks to my celebrity guest, Dalton Sear. Thanks to my castmates, Ayakunle Falama, Ebony and Erica from Tula La One on YouTube, and Michelle Morgan. Our final song of the night is Omarion with Icebox. I'm Sade Champagne, and thanks for listening to my radio show. I am forever grateful for your support. We'll see you next Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific time right here on Grind Hard Radio.